This sunrise photo recently won an Insta360 Young Gun Award. So in this video, I wanted to share with you some sunrise and sunset photo tips so you could go out and capture a photo like this too. If you're new to this channel, my name is Rich and this channel is dedicated to making 360 easy for everyone so you can have more fun with your 360 camera. So please hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you're told straight away when I upload new content. I'm a bit of an early riser, so for me, I tend to shoot more sunrises than sunsets but the principles are very similar. The photos you're gonna see are mainly from the Insta360 ONE X, but there are also some Insta360 ONE R and GoPro Max photos in there as well. So let's get straight onto the tips. Use manual settings. This is the most important tip when you're shooting sunrise and sunset photos. If you don't use manual settings and use auto, then the camera will be guessing as to what you want the exposure to look like, and it will inevitably overexpose all of your shots. If you use manual settings, you'll be able to have richer colors and you'll be able to make your photos look a lot more dramatic. So start with a low to mid ISO and then adjust the shutter accordingly to show off the sun rising or setting. I can't give you exact settings so you're just going to have to experiment because every situation with the sunrise and sunset from one minute to the next is very different. Experiment with using the HDR settings in your photos, which will give you a higher dynamic range and more flexibility when you edit your photos later. Higher dynamic range basically gives you more detail in both the shadows right through to the highlights in your photos. Consider your surroundings and find a point of focus. This is particularly important with 360 photography because the lenses on a 360 camera are super wide. So something that may look dramatic to the naked eye, once you photograph it with a 360 camera, it can look insignificant and not as dramatic. No matter how good the sun looks to the eye, on a 360 photo, it's gonna look really small. So it's important to include other points of interest to enhance our photo. So the other points of focus to consider in your shot could be trees, could be buildings, or it could just be you. And then consider how the whole image flows to the eye. So position something at the top and then opposite at the bottom, two trees either side. Just consider how all of these things work together. Use silhouettes to enhance your shots. If you're gonna stand in your shot, then if you stand in front of the sun and create a silhouette, then it can be really dramatic. You can also silhouette animals, trees and buildings and silhouettes look particularly good at first light, so get there before the sun rises. But remember to change it up and don't be fixated with the sun and that side of the sky because the sky can look equally dramatic opposite the sun. If you can find some water, a pond, a lake, or even a puddle, then try and use it and get some reflections in the water because it will add so much more interest to your photos. For sunrises, arrive early. I know it's painful, but set your alarm and you won't regret it. Get there at least an hour before the sun rises. The sky at first light is incredible and you don't want to miss it. And the same with sunsets. Figure out what time the sun sets and get there at least an hour so you can capture that golden hour before the sun sets. If you're shooting a sunset, then stay at least an hour after the sun has dipped below the horizon. After this point, it can take between 70 and 100 minutes to actually get properly dark. There are some great opportunities in this blue hour where the light in the sky is exceptional. Whether you're shooting sunrises or sunsets, don't wait for the perfect shot. Just keep shooting, keep moving the camera, change position, change the manual settings. The sky will change rapidly at sunrise or sunset and every minute offers a new opportunity for a different type of photo. If we look at these equirectangular photos with timestamps, you can see how quickly the sky changes within minutes. Don't delete anything until you get home. The lighting varies so much throughout a sunrise or a sunset that your eyes can be deceived with what they see on the app or what they see on the LCD screen. So wait until you get home before you make any decisions about what you're gonna keep and what you're gonna delete. Sometimes I've been disappointed with what I've seen on the app, only to be really pleased when I see it again when I get home. Also, you may find when you get home that a shot you intended to be a tiny planet works more effectively as an inverted planet. So play around with your shots when you get home to see what looks best before you reject them. Download a good sunrise and sunset app to your phone. I use Sky Candy and Photo Sky Candy gives you a really good indication of how much color will be in the sky and it gives you a percentage indication of whether the sunset or the sunrise will be good or not. Photocast breaks down the sunrise times for first light, blue hour, sunrise and golden hour and then for sunset, golden hour, sunset, blue hour and darkness. So check out the sunrise and sunset times and conditions as well as the wind conditions 
because the last thing you want is to be worried about your camera falling over if the winds are particularly high. So download a Sunrise or Sunset app and get out there and start taking some photos. Tag me in Instagram at eatsleep360. Thanks for watching. You can watch these two videos next and I'll see you on the next video.